Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. This is Ro. I cannot thank you for all the amazing questions that you guys have been sending me recently. This is one that I've got that I wanna answer um, today. And it's funny, <clears throat> I'm still at home sick. Well, it's actually the same exact day that I filmed the last video that I posted on Friday. Um, so I did the video, I kind of rested a little bit and I was downstairs watching Dr. Phil and it dawned on me, I was like, oh my God, I got this great question related to Dr. Phil. Um, so I'm going to go upstairs, shower, make myself a little bit presentable, feel a little bit better, and then, um, answer this question on a video. And that said, I'm feeling a lot better. My headache finally has subsided. Um, the cough is getting a little bit better and I don't feel as achy. So I will hopefully be back at work tomorrow and business as usual. But in the meantime, this day off has afforded me a little bit of rest and to be able to get SPWF work done as well. So I feel productive, even though sometimes I feel like, I know it's so hard for me to just rest and do nothing. And a lot of you guys, I've actually gotten comments from a few people that are like, I'm so concerned about you. You go and go and go and go and go. So this is kind of a good day that I've been able to rest, but also be productive as well. And I did debate going to get my nails done because they're so bad, but then I decided against it only because I think that's really, really messed up when people go do things sick. Like the lady would be touching my hands. That's germs. Like the reason I got this is probably because someone went to the gym when they weren't well enough to be there. So, or went to work when they weren't well enough to be there. And so that's how things spread. And I'm not going to be the jerk that gives the flu to the lady that's doing my nails. So I just have to go around looking like this until the weekend when I'm well enough and not contagious. Anyway, let me read this question to you guys and then I'll go through the answer. This is from a lovely SPWF member who lives not too far from me. And she said, um, she explained her story in the background to me and introduced herself. And then she said, I hope you and your family are doing well. I recently came across your SPWF YouTube channel and I've been watching a lot of your videos. You know how much that touches my heart. If you guys are new here, welcome. Please hit the subscribe button because we really are one big family that helps and supports one another. And even if you don't have a family member who's incarcerated, I would love to educate you on people who do support people who are incarcerated and why and what it's like to be part of our lives. Um, so she said, the break the stigma video is probably the one that reson resonated with me the most. And I'll post that somewhere in here. This video was like a breath of fresh air because I've been stigmatized or discriminated against by everyone I have all, I have ever known. Breaks my heart so much. There is even a Dr. Phil episode on this type of bias. Here's a short clip and she sent me the video and I debated putting the video in here, but I don't know copyright wise if I'm able to. So I'll just talk you guys through it. But if you want to Google, I mean, if you want to search on YouTube, which is really funny. Sometime, one time somebody told me to Google something on Yahoo a long time ago and I was laughing so hard. Um, I guess Google has become, Googling something has become synonymous with searching it on the internet, excuse me. I'm trying not to cough on this video. So anyway, if you just wanna search this episode, it'll pop right up, I'm sure. So she said, as a follow up to your stigma video, I was wondering if you could talk about your opinion on the characteristics that Dr. Phil shares. I think you're doing a wonderful job. I appreciate your candor, your vulnerability, and your grace. I hope we can meet one day. Um, and then she signed her name, which is so sweet. So the video, if you guys wanna search it, is called Common Characteristics of Prison Wives. And I actually heard about this video a long time ago and I've been wanting to watch it and I never actually searched it. I never just sat down to watch it. So I'm glad that she sent me the link because I just had to click and just put my earphones in and watch it. So I had no excuse. And in this video, um, it was only a short clip of an episode. And on, on the Dr. Phil show as his guest was the woman who became engaged to the man who, I believe his name is Stephen Avery, the man who they made the Netflix documentary about... Um, called Making a Murderer. And so she was an MWI. She said she saw the documentary and I did some research afterwards. This wasn't in this short, like three minute clip, but she said she saw the documentary and immediately she just felt compelled to write to him. And she did. And I believe she was going through a pretty sloppy divorce at the time. In fact, he asked like, was it a, was it an ugly divorce? And then he stopped. He's like, what divorce is, is easy. Um, and so they, started out just friends and then slowly they developed a love for each other and it grew into something more and then they became engaged. So Dr. Phil in this one episode that I watched 
shared these characteristics he thinks are common among every single prison wife, girlfriend, fiance, you know, anybody who's in a relationship with somebody who's incarcerated. So he said, number one, they are damaged either mentally, emotionally, or physically. Let me go through all of them and then I'll talk through them and how I feel about this. So um, number two, he said, there's some sort of fantasy involved. They tend to approach these situations as the love is fantasy. Number three, they have the Cinderella aspect as far as like he swooped in and saved your life. And then number four, they rationalize his crime and charges. And then he added one that he called outside of the box, um, which is, so he's saying this is a category of women, not all prison wives present this. Um, and it is actually a disorder called hype. Hmm. Let me see if I can say this. Hybristophilia hybristophilia, which is just being attracted to the bad boys for excitement, being attracted to a criminal, finding a thrill in that. Um, and again, he said that every single person who's involved with a prisoner displays all four of those characteristics and some of them display that, that fifth disorder. So um, damaged emotionally, mentally, physically. Well, well, first let me start by saying this. I do not think it's fair to make such a generalized blanket statement. I don't think that's right. We never talk in general statements because there's always anomalies. There's always um, exceptions to every rule. Yes, there's the stigma that we've discussed earlier that I posted earlier here in the cards, but also um, there's, there, there is that and there are the people that live to it. And I have to say that they do exist for a reason like I explained there, but also there's the people that live against it and there's the people that fight to live above that every single day. So to say that every single person that is in this type of a situation displays all of these characteristics, I don't, I don't, I do not agree with. I think that that's wrong. However, I do agree with some of the things that, things that he's saying and you guys are going to be like, what? No. Well, let me explain why. And I could tell you this, my girlfriend, Sarah, told me about this video a long time ago. And she, I don't know if it was this one, but she told me about a Dr. Phil episode where he was talking about prison lives. And she said that she refuses, like she was so appalled that she refuses to watch him ever since. And I totally respected that. And I always wondered what that video was about. And I don't know if it was this one, because I believe throughout the years, he's had multiple people on who are in this same situation. In fact, I think that we at SPWF were contacted by his producers to um, be featured to have our members be featured. And we, we, I think at that point we just respectfully declined. But the point is, um, I don't think that every single one is damaged mentally, emotionally, or physically. However, large majority of us have, especially any woman, it doesn't have to be somebody that's prison life, but any woman who puts up with abuse and control and neglect is damaged because they feel like they, um, that's all they deserve. They feel like they don't deserve any better. They feel like that's the best that they could get. They feel like they do deserve to be treated the way that they were treated in their past, whether that be abused mentally or physically or emotionally. So we do have a lot of members who display the characteristics, but we also know a lot of mem a lot of people in everyday life who display those characteristics. And it could be your neighbor that's living with a husband that beats her, God forbid, but people who are damaged do get themselves in relationships that are unhealthy. And a lot of these relationships are unhealthy. I fight every single day to help people get out of those types of relationships. Yes, I'm such a soldier for getting you through this and getting moving past, you know, getting through the sentence and moving past and making it through and living, living happily ever after on the other side. But at the same time, if I have a girlfriend who comes in, if I have a sister who comes in to either comments here on a video or on my social media pages or on the website when we get it back up or on our app and she is struggling and she explains what's going on and I see him damaging her or controlling her or abusing her or neglecting her, I am the first person to tell her, sweetheart, it is time for you to go. It is time for you to put yourself first. So yes, a lot of these women are damaged, but not 100% of them. And a lot of these relationships are unhealthy but not 100% of them. So I can agree with Dr. Phil that a lot of these people are, but I cannot agree with him that a lot of them are not. So number two is um, 
fantasy. So I, th if, I believe that in this specific instance, he's talking about MWI, met while incarcerated relationships. And I can relate to this because I'm RWI, re reunited, rekindled during. So he said, you know, you never really had to pick up his dirty socks or pick up his underwear or clean up after him or keep the house going and you working full time when he relays on the couch and refuses to get a job. So I see, I totally see what he's saying because a lot of this, I live in fantasy and I actually posted a video not too long ago and I'll post it somewhere here in the cards that talks about the fantasy and how I had to kind of get off that bus, the fantasy with him, but I wasn't talking about this, but I could totally 100% relate to this. And I believe, yes, we all do live in fantasy at points during our relationships. I can probably say that across the board that not every single one of us at the same time, the whole time, I think some eventually there's a point where a majority of us become disillusioned. But as far as um, living in a fantasy for an MWI, of course, like you you really have, I say this all the time, like this is where, you know, the book, The Five Love Languages come in. I was like, I don't necessarily know that we have our complete love language across the board or if our love language will change when he comes home because we've never had the opportunity to get mad at him for not taking out the garbage or not cleaning up his dirty socks or not trying to get a job so even as far as that like we fantasize that life is going to be perfect when he gets out all we need to do is get him home and everything's going to be absolutely perfect and that's not always the case like we have a lot of members who don't last more than a few weeks or six months or a couple of years because it just didn't work out i have a video where a woman wrote into me and explained exactly what happened to them after he got out and how things just kind of unraveled and he went back to old associates and bad habits and etc and i'll post that in here but um it doesn't always work out the way the fantasy exists, but a lot of times to get ourselves through and to carry ourselves so we don't end up just depressed every day that we do kind of create this fantasy world for ourselves. Um, and I say it all the time, especially with MWI, even as far as um, intimacy, right? If, you, if you're MWI, you've never been, been intimate with that person so you don't know if you're compatible on that level and that's a risk that you're taking and that's that's okay i mean a lot of people are of the belief that if there is enough emotional 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 attachment and love there then that intimate connection will be there but a lot of people don't and that's just something that you're going to have to be willing to find out and to wait for so if you're in this for a really long time then there probably is a lot of fantasy there i cannot disagree with him on this one i actually agree with him all the way and if you're like oh how could you agree he was talking bad about us i don't think he was necessarily talking bad about us i don't think he had i think he had maybe had an air about him of a better than air about him that i didn't appreciate but i think he was speaking from um a concerned father type of perspective versus bleh, stigma type of perspective so before you get even if you watch that video i my thought is to just come in with an open mind and before you get defensive figure out what's underneath that and figure out why you're getting defensive because um i actually took this class a few years ago and the first thing that they told us in that intro was let go of saying, I already know this. Let go of saying, oh, I've heard this before. I've wasted my money. This class isn't going to be anything for me. I already know everything. And come into it saying, what am I going to learn from this? What else? What new can I learn from this? How am I going to get something out of this that I haven't gotten from the other classes that I've taken that taught something very similar or the same concepts? Well, I want you to kind of take that and put that here where before you get defensive and say, oh, well, he's just talking bad about us, because we're understandably always on the defensive because of that stigma that exists against us and we feel like we're judged very often. Think about why you're getting upset and uncover the, 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 the defensiveness because underneath defensiveness is always a different emotion. Um, so the next one is the Cinderella aspect, he saved your life. We have a lot of members who come in and say that. A lot of members come in and say, um, I wouldn't have been able to do this. You know, we have a lot of MWI members that say, I um, was going through a horrible 
marriage. I was going through a messy divorce. My husband came in and, and just told me that one day he didn't want to be with me anymore. And so I picked up the phone. I picked up the phone. Oh my gosh. I turned on the computer and I searched and I found a pen pal ad and I wrote to somebody and we became friends and a relationship developed or I had a very abusive relationship. I had um, a son who was a drug addict. So I reached out to somebody who um, I thought well, could help me because they were in those shoes. These are all real scenarios of people that I know and that I've dealt with. Or, you know, I had a friend who um, got me back in touch with, not back in touch, who got me in touch with somebody who was in there and we developed a relationship. There's so many different reasons that this could happen where you do feel like he saved your life. And I think that that's okay in a sense, but I also think that could lead to codependency down the road. So as long as you feel like he helped me empower myself to move forward with my life and now we develop this relationship. So I, so he helped me reclaim my power. And so now I'm um, a stand up whole individual that can move forward on my own. I feel good about myself. I feel confident. And he helped me rediscover that. That's a very different perspective than he saved me. I can't live without him. I've had women say I can't breathe without him. Um, and then if the phone doesn't ring, she's falling apart. She doesn't know what to do with herself. She doesn't know how to breathe. If they get into an argument, but just like a normal marital disagreement, she feels like the whole world crumbled around her. That's the Cinderella aspect where I think Dr. Phil is saying that it's very harmful to you and your relationship. So if you are one of those women who he saved my life, I just want you to rem just, just soul search and figure out how he empowered you you how you, you keep your power you claim your own power do not give your power away to anybody ever especially as a woman do not give your power away to a man in a relationship because that is only going to lead to negative things in your relationship in the future it's only going to lead to you losing your self-confidence losing your self-esteem and feeling like you can't survive on your own as a healthy whole individual so just start um start really soul searching and figuring out how he helped you yes absolutely that is totally amazing if he helped you reclaim your life if you were going through a terrible experience but girlfriend you did that for yourself he helped you but you did that on your own so i just need you to soul search and figure out how you did that on your own how he helped you but you could have done that on your own without him too and i want you to know that so he might have sped along the process and he was there for you the whole time and that's beautiful and amazing and that deserves to be celebrated but it should not be he saved my life and now i either owe him my life or I can't live without him. It should be he helped me and now we are two healthy, whole, empowered individuals coming together to make this beautiful relationship thrive even further. Two very, very, very different things. And if you guys are having trouble figuring out how to do that, we do have on Patreon our new kind of like home away from here where we're doing extras and extra videos for you guys and extra posts. And there is a level where you get once a month a, um, a life coaching session with me so we could talk through this and I could help you through that because I've helped a lot of women through that so look over there I'll post the link somewhere in here it's always posted in the description boxes of all of my videos but I can very easily help you through that if you sign up for the level there's it's broken up into different levels and the highest level you will get a monthly coaching session with me so go in there and check that out because I can help you with that and then the next one he says is rationalizing his crimes and his charges and I've like through the years I've heard a lot of people rationalizing his crimes and charges although I say that in my situation and the women that I encounter Counter, a lot of us don't rationalize them like I I have found myself rationalizing things in the past like well his victims were criminals themselves so he believed that um, that robbing criminals wasn't wrong but then obviously we both grew matured and we became adults and we realized robbing anybody's wrong. Just because they're a criminal doesn't make your act any less criminal. So there are things that maybe um, that you can rationalize or diminish to make yourself feel better. But again, that's something that I preach to all of our Strong Prison Wives and Families members is to have him go through all of the charges with you, especially if you're MWI or RWI, I mean, if you met him before 
if he was lying to you and you knew nothing about it, then these are conversations that need to be had. So you are well equipped to know if you are okay with moving forward with him. And then my friends, you need to fact check him and you need to cross reference those facts because media outlets are going to design a story the way that they need to design it. But if you have a few different um, vehicles and a few different things where make sure that his story checks out with what you find online and the people you see and kind of the truth is going to probably be somewhere in the middle because he's not trying to glamorize what he did if it was horrible and these news outlets are of course trying to make him to be the biggest villain so they get their story out of it so you really need to figure out what he did in your fear okay with moving on but I don't need anybody rationalizing it and I think that that's something that we've worked really 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 hard to do at SPWF is to get people to not be the victim or to not be rationalizing like I if you could go back to 2011 when I started making these videos and I don't think once I ever said Adam was not guilty and I don't think ever once that I rationalized his crimes they were wrong he was a bad guy back in the day and so I believe, I always said, I believed he be, he deserved to do the time he got. Well, no, that's wrong. The underlying time he got. However, I don't believe that he deserved a life sentence for robbery, and I will always go to bat for him saying that, and I do not think that is me diminishing or justifying or rationalizing what he said in any, or what he did in any way, because we've had people on Capitol Hill say that. We had the judge in his case say that. We had jury members come back afterwards and say that um, if I knew how much time he was going to get, I would not I, I would not have been okay with him getting that. So I don't know if, if all of that is me rationalizing it anyway, because what he did was 100% wrong. He feels remorse for it. We've talked through it. Um, and so and he's a completely different person at 43 years old than he was at 23 years old. I would not be with or wait for the person he was when he was 23 years old because, like I said, he was a bad guy. So um, I think that that's a – I don't think 100% of the people do that, but I think it's a good point. And I think it, it brought up a point that I think you guys that are watching this really, really needed to hear, especially for MWIs. So, again, before you get angry at him – and maybe his presentation was a little bit off and maybe lumping every single one of us into one big bucket was wrong. Not maybe, it was wrong because not all of us display all those characteristics and I've been fighting for many, many, many years as well as many of you have been fighting for many years to break all of that or to, I don't want to say break it, to live against all of that. But he does have valid points and arguments here. And the last one is... Um, he says not everybody but a lot of people have this hybristophilia which is when you're attracted to the bad boys and i can i lived through this i watched this happen so i could say that yes 100 percent, this is the case i was leaving visit one time and there was this girl that was walking out there was like a it was the cop that was walking us out me this girl was kind of almost parallel to me walking out and then like kind of like a group of five people walking behind us we go down like this walkway to get for outside so we leave the visit the visit room right that's in that's in a different building we have probably like a 50 yard little concrete walkway sidewalk outside and then we go back into the front building where they process us out and we leave so as we're walking down that little 50 yard sidewalk this woman turns around and she was all like hyped up and she's like oh my god this is great it's crazy it really is just like i saw on tv whoa and the cop kind of looks over his shoulder at me and we both kind of exchange like a little a little glance like WTF at each other like whoa and we both kind of just snickered and then went on our merry little ways because <sighs> there's nothing glamorous about this there's nothing glamorous about being with a bad boy and I think that that I know nothing about that disorder I have no training in this but in my gut and in my intuition and my common sense tells me that somebody who has been a victim of abuse or like going back to his point number one, somebody who has traumas in their life, somebody who has been physically, emotionally, or um, I can't remember the other word, physically, emotionally, or whatever the other thing was, abused, that they're, they're, maybe they will go after that bad boy because they will feel protected or maybe they will go after that bad boy because they feel like that's what they deserve. They deserve the person that's going to treat them as harshly as the person in their youth or in their past has 
or again that that bad boy is going to take care of them at and it holds no punches they don't care to what end they will take care of them and they want to be taken care of that little girl inside of them that was so hurt in their past wants to and needs to be taken care of so they go and seek out that person or they just think it's cool and it's glamorous like that girl that was walking down i mean i know i don't know her from anybody but she was just like this was like whoa just like i saw on tv this is great and if you're that girl if you're the girl that's like oh i saw this on tv I just need you to do some soul searching. What are you doing here? Because there is nothing cool, fun, exciting about this. There's nothing exciting about going through this over and over again, like being the revolving door of recidivism. There's nothing exciting about this. I want my golden ticket. I'm waiting for my ticket out. My, uh, you know, the Monopoly get out of jail free card. So um, I really, really, really want you guys to soul search. And if you do feel like you always go after the bad boys and they're they're really exciting to you for some reason i'd love for you guys to reach out and get yourself professional help because let's uncover what is going on deep down in there and why you think you need that protection or why you feel like you deserve that so i hope that this didn't offend anybody because i again don't necessarily agree with how it was presented but sometimes we need to hear these things sometimes we need tough love and i don't disagree with everything that he said so um I would love to know you guys, please, in the comments below, please let me know your thoughts. Go back and watch that video. I, I'm going to have to look into copyright and see if I can even post a link to the video in my video or in my description box. I'm really just learning this and how to um, make sure that legally I respect copyrights. But if even if you just search what I said the name of the video was, just even if you do Dr. Phil in prison or Dr. Phil making a murderer wife, I'm sure it'll pop up. And then please comment below with your thoughts, even if you disagree with me. I don't care. That's cool. Um, check us out on Patreon, like I said, and I will help you through uh, that feeling and those, those emotions that are coming up. And um, I will see you guys in the next one. Keep staying strong. Keep loving strong. Keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to yours. I will see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one.